Today I have explained a 2022 drama mystery thriller film called Deep Water. It follows the tale of a, his spouse wife to have illicit relationship with different men as he needs to stay away from the chaos of separation. Be that as it may, he turns into the great suspect when he admirers of his significant other start to strangely vanish to realize what occurs. Watch till the end. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Like and share with your friends, please. Toward the start of the film, we see a man named Vic Van Allen, who gets back riding his bicycle through the forest. As he removes his jeans, he sees that his better half Melinda is checking him out. Melinda says nothing and goes higher up. Two or three lives in a modest community in Louisiana and has a little girl named Trixie. Melinda is preparing for a party. As Vic helps her wear a shoe, Melinda lets him know that she cherishes him. The two then, at that point, go out to show up at the party. At the party, they meet a portion of their companions and have a decent visit. All of a sudden, Melinda heads out to welcome her companion named Joel Run. She then, at that point, takes him out and goes close to a pool, where she begins kissing him. Incidentally, Joel is Melinda's sweetheart. Vic watches them kissing outside. Melinda sees Vic watching them, yet she doesn't stop and constant kissing Joel. One of Vic's companions sees Melinda and Joel together and communicates her anxiety to Vic that Melinda may not adore him the manner in which he cherishes her. However, Vic just says that it doesn't concern him. In a little while, Melinda becomes inebriated and begins moving on top of a piano. She then, at that point, plays the piano and starts singing. Regardless of her straightforwardly undermining him, Vic grins at Melinda, as though he is alright with this. Afterward, Joel approaches Vic for a talk. Joel expresses gratitude toward Vic for allowing him to see Melinda. Vic nonchalantly inquires as to whether he has caught wind of the secretive vanishing of a man named Martin McRae, who was likewise one of the admirers of Melinda. Vic then uncovers that he killed Martin with a sledge. Joel believes that Vic is kidding, yet Vic guarantees him that it's anything but a joke. Not long after that, Joel leaves the party. While leaving for home, Melinda inquires as to whether he expressed anything to Joel, yet Vic denies saying anything to him. At home, Vic assists Melinda with taking her garments off. Melinda lets him know that she prefers Joel, as he values her for what her identity is. It is then uncovered that Vic and Melinda have an arrangement, as per which Melinda can get in a relationship with any man she needs since there is no adoration in their marriage any longer. Vic lets her date anybody she needs, as long as she doesn't leave him and Trixie. Vic has consented to her terms since he needs to stay away from the untidiness of separation. The following morning, Vic goes to drop Trixie at her school. While getting back to his vehicle, one of his companions inquires as to whether what he shared with Joel is valid. Vic answers that it was only a joke and that's it. The joke rapidly spreads around the area, and everybody continues to inquire as to whether he, as a matter of fact did it. In any case, Vic lets them know exactly the same thing that it was only a joke. At home, Melinda irately faces Vic for undermining her sweetheart. Vic apologizes to her and commitments her that it won't ever occur from this point onward. Yet, Melinda believes Vic should apologize to Joel, so she has welcomed him over for supper. At the point when Joel shows up, Vic welcomes him. Joel is still marginally terrified by Vic, however stays composed. While eating, Joel uncovers that he is intending to move throughout the end of the week. Melinda then advises Vic to take care of Trixie, as she needs to invest some energy alone with Joel. Afterward, when Melinda goes to the restroom, Vic stands up to Joel and consoles him that he killed Martin. Vic then calls a Uber and guides Joel to leave right away, by implication compromising him that he might meet a similar destiny as Martin in the event that he doesn't. At some point, the Van Allens hit up a party, where they meet a couple, Ware and Kelly Wilson. Vic later hits the dance floor with Kelly while Melinda watches them. While getting back, Melinda inquires as to whether he found Kelly alluring. Vic answers that he did. Kelly appears to be desirous of this, as she feels that Kelly is more appealing than her. At the point when the two get back, 
they mate enthusiastically, as they are both turned on. At some point, while at a soccer match for Trixie, Vic gets a call from his bank about an installment made by Melinda to a piano educator named Charlie Delisle. Vic tracks Charlie and follows him to a live show. Vic then discovers that Melinda is seeing Charlie despite his good faith. Sometime thereafter, Vic gets back and sees that Martin's body has been viewed as in the woods. He is represented to have been shot dead. Right when Melinda gets back, Vic illuminates her unsettling Martin. Melinda is aggravated about this data and goes straightforwardly to her room. As days voyage by, Melinda starts effective money management more energy with Charlie, and the two grow closer. Vic is familiar with this and is becoming disturbed. Exactly when Melinda gets back resulting to going during that time with Charlie, Vic resentfully goes facing Melinda and encourages her to stop seeing Charlie. In any case, Melinda rejects, saying that Charlie causes her to feel cherished, which Vic is unequipped for. In spite of the fact that Vic demands that he adores Melinda, it's not the sort of affection Melinda needs. At some point, Vic and Melinda hit up a pool party with their companions, to which Charlie is moreover welcomed. A short time later, Melinda acquaints Charlie with Vic as her piano instructor. Vic imagines that he has barely any insight into their undertaking and maintains an even mind. Soon thereafter, Vic searches for Melinda, who is away for a really long time. Vic goes close to the pool and finds Melinda messing around with Charlie. The two are developing nearer, which makes Vic desirous. All at once it starts to rain and everybody run inside the house, aside from Vic and Charlie. In a little while, Vic strolls in and joins the others. Melinda searches for Charlie, yet can't find him anyplace. She then watches through of the window and is stunned to see Charlie drifting face down in the pool. Every one of the men haul him out of the water and endeavor to revive him. Be that as it may, Ware coincidentally drops Charlie's body, knocking his head against the edge of the pool. They before long understand that Charlie is dead. At the point when the analysts show up, they question every one of the visitors present at the party. Melinda out and out blames Vic for suffocating Charlie, however Vic denies it. Vic is then addressed in private with respect to the allegation by Melinda. Vic says that Charlie was excessively tipsy and was sticking to the profound finish of the pool. The analysts are happy with him and don't get him for additional scrutinizing. The fact that Vic has killed Charlie makes Melinda at this point resolve. So Vic inquires as to whether she is scared of Vic, realizing that he killed Charlie. Melinda answers that she isn't, as she is what Vic killed for. One day while getting back on his bicycle, Vic sees a vehicle following him. Afterward, after Vic drops Trixie at school, Kelly approaches Vic and lets him know that Ware thinks that Vic might have killed Charlie. What's more, Ware and Melinda are hanging out a lot and are concocting weird speculations. Vic educates Kelly that she doesn't need to stress regarding anything and welcomes her and Ware over for supper. Sometime thereafter, Ware and Kelly show up at Vic's home for supper. Vic then, at that point, takes Ware to a confidential spot and advises him to quit let individuals know that he killed Charlie. However, Ware actually thinks Vic's contribution in Charlie's homicide, so he inquires as to whether he will take a falsehood identifier test to demonstrate that he is honest, to which Vic serenely answers yes. At some point, Vic sees the vehicle that has been following him for some time. At the point when he sees through the window, he sees a camera, understanding that he is being followed by a confidential specialist. Vic then sees Melinda eating with the confidential examiner in a close-by coffee shop and goes along with them. Melinda acquaints Vic with the man and lets him know that he is a psychotherapist named David Risigliani. Vic immediately understands that he is the confidential agent recruited by Melinda and Ware. So Vic goes directly to Ware's home and defies him before Kelly and their girl. Vic blames him for recruiting an examiner, yet Ware denies it. So Vic shows him a bank explanation of Melinda, saying that she sent cash to Ware to employ David. At some point, Vic gets Melinda seeing another companion of hers. The man is Melinda's school beau, Tony Cameron. Vic sees that the two are developing nearer, which makes him envious. He has a go at conversing with Melinda about Tony, 
however Melinda won't converse with him. The following day, Melinda welcomes Tony to their home for supper. Vic is amicable towards Tony, in any event, when Melinda nonchalantly specifies that Tony is the first American she mated with. However, where it counts, Vic is loaded up with rage, which increases when he sees Melinda and Tony playing with one another. The following day, Vic approaches Tony in his jeep and lets him know that Melinda needs to show him a structure site she has been dealing with. Vic then, at that point, drives him to the forest, where there is no sign. When Vic gets him alone, he tosses a stone at Tony's head. Vic tosses one more stone at him, making him stagger down the precipice and crush his head onto a stone, which kills him immediately. Vic then, at that point, hauls Tony's body and endeavors to conceal the body in the water by tying it with rocks. At some point, Vic takes Melinda and Trixie out for a cookout in the forest. While Trixie is playing, Melinda asks Vic for what valid reason he is the main man who needs to remain with her. Vic answers that he simply cherishes her for what her identity is and won't ever leave her. Vic then gifts her a photograph collection he made for her. The two hug and acknowledge each other for what their identity is. All of a sudden, Trixie goes close to the stream where Vic has suffocated Tony's body. Vic races to get Trixie and sees that Tony's body has started to drift on a superficial level. While getting back, Melinda makes reference to that she abandoned her scarf. So Vic tells her that he will return for it the following day. Soon thereafter, Melinda requests that Vic rest in her room, as she would rather not be distant from everyone else. Melinda communicates that she cherishes Vic. The two then kiss one another and mate enthusiastically. The following morning, Vic takes off to the forest on his bicycle. In the interim, Melinda finds Tony's wallet and understands that Vic has killed Tony. Melinda is crushed by the disclosure that Vic has killed every one of her darlings. So she packs her possessions and chooses to leave Vic for good. At the point when Trixie finds out about this, she tosses the bag in the pool and tells Melinda they are not leaving. Not long after arriving at the stream, Vic endeavors to sink Tony's body further in. All at once, Ware comes there and approaches Vic. Vic attempts to dispose of Ware, however Ware detects Tony's arm drifting. He then, at that point, surges back to his vehicle and drives away. Vic pursues him on his bicycle and pursues a faster route to get Ware. Right when he is going to get Ware, he tumbles off his bicycle before Ware's vehicle. Ware rapidly turns hard to abstain from hitting him however winds up driving his vehicle down a slope what's more, passes on in the wake of crashing his vehicle. In the wake of affirming Ware's demise, Vic gets back on his bicycle and gets back. He sees Melinda sitting on the steps and checking him out. This is the scene from the outset of the film when Vic got back on his bicycle. Melinda lets Vic know that she tracked down Tony's wallet, yet she won't utter a word. A while later, Melinda consumes Tony's ID, proposing that she plans to remain with Vic. So this was the story of, Deep Water. If you liked the story, then do watch the full film, and if you want to watch more such movies explained, then do make sure to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next hunt.